Like for us students who don't have no money, eh, it's better to photocopy the topic you want or the chapter so that you can pass your exam for the purpose of education. If you find a book cannot contain the whole information that you need, sometimes you find you need a few pages of the book. So photocopying is always okay and cheap and fine. Uganda is undergoing commercial law reforms with new laws being enacted continually. One of these laws is the intellectual property rights. This intends to safeguard the rights of indigenous individuals against people who might want to freely use or even copy their inventions without permission. But available legislation in the country on intellectual property rights is hindered by implementation, thus innovators are not protected. Intellectual property rights have two sections, the industrial property and the copyright. These are intended to encourage people to come up with new ideas and reward the initiative. Intellectual property, as the word suggests, it's property that is awarded to people that have innovated, that have come up with things that are beneficial to the society as a result of their intellect. So to protect that property in the things that have been innovated, in the things that have been come up, that have been developed by these people, they are protected by the law. So this law gives them an opportunity to exclusively enjoy the benefits of, say, writing a book. If I'm an author and I've written a book and it's being sold, I must actually be recognized for the work that I've done. Under the copyrights law, originators have exclusive rights to their creations, which give them a legal right to prevent others from copying or reproducing their work. Such creations may be intangible or intangible form and may include musical compositions, paintings, among others. But the focus now is on study materials. Intellectual property rights are important because you will protect the people that are writing and they will know that they are protected and therefore they will write more. But it will become extremely dangerous when you only protect and don't make those people that you're protecting realize that they have the obligation to ensure that the people that are protecting them, community that is offering this law to protect them, needs to access the materials. While law reforms are intended to promote innovation, these laws and drafts in their contemporary form pose a major threat to students at higher institutions of learning who must have access to study material at affordable prices. So there has been a lot of talk on uh, copyright, but from the music industry uh, perspective, and the educational perspective seems to have been negated. But the way copyright protection is uh, enforced is equally important because the purpose as to why copyright was brought into force was to ensure that actually people access educational materials. You encourage people to write more books. I think it is good for, for all of us. As long as you are an author, you wouldn't like to see your work pirated or plagiarized. So I think it's a scholarly activity rather than a developed, developing world issue. Under the intellectual property rights is also the anti-counterfeit goods bill. According to this bill, provided for under section 46 of the Penal Code or Constitution, the importation of copyrighted work or other goods into Uganda is prohibited. The objective is to prohibit trade in counterfeit goods, in this case study materials which infringe on rights of inventors. The way the bill was initially thought was that any person who produces something that is substantially similar to the, that of the original, it becomes counterfeiting. In effect, it would mean that if there is a particular book that is copyrighted and someone photocopies it, even to a limited educational purpose, it would be counterfeiting. We should see the policy on anti-counterfeiting expressly recognizing the fact that it is not, reco it's not targeting enforcing copyright on limited exceptions of access to educational materials. This not only affects the student's ability to access affordable study material, but also frustrates the poor, most of whom cannot afford original products. Parents are actually struggling to pay school fees. They're struggling to pay tuition. And in addition to that, they are required to pay textbooks. When I was in law school, the cheapest textbook would be about 150,000. That's quite high for a normal person in Uganda. 
let the government open up very many libraries and make those libraries free if they want to really talk about issues like no photocopying. And then on top of that, let the media also know that photocopying or the copyright law can never perform in a growing country or in a third world country like this. Uganda with photocopying, Uganda with a photocopy, with a copyright law, we are still just, you know, in sarcasm or dreams or something like that. Now, some advocates fear that the proposed intellectual property regulations are intended to benefit developed countries whose laws are far well developed and implemented at the drop of a hat. The biggest concern with intellectual property is that it has not been well understood and the, the, the fact is that very many people who have intellectual property rights are not able to enforce them precisely because they are ignorant of those very rights. A lot of people don't know about copyright eh? and a lot of people for instance think it's okay to copy. Majority of people, particularly in Uganda and East Africa in general, learn from the printed material by spoken word and associated imagery. Although local writers and publishers have tried to fill the gap, the level of in-depth research, system of education, and literary skills cannot compare to those of their counterparts in the Western world, especially at higher learning institutions, due to poor funding and inept institutional systems. At university here, to, to, have, a, to, have, to have a page photocopied for you, it costs, it costs around 50 shillings, rather than buying a uh, particular reading material, that means you have to buy a whole textbook, which is very expensive. So there is no way you can say that we just have to buy books and stop the photocopying. Then this sets the government or raises the government to start planning better for the next generation. Otherwise for us, at this generation there is no way we can pervert ourselves from photocopying data or information. By examining the problem of access to learning materials and understanding its connection to the current intellectual property rights, provides Uganda with a firmly rooted take on its options. The connection between copyright and access to textbooks is not necessarily understood by students at high institutions of learning. Most do not know why they have to seek permission before photocopying learning material, let alone the implications. The law says that for as long as the copying that you are doing does not affect the performance of the book in the market, so when students copy the whole book, definitely that is affecting the performance of the book in the market eh? because they are not going to buy a full copy. We shall not need permission to, to actually uh, photocopy these notes, but the blame will be unto the government. Our grandfathers have been photocopying books from the time we were born up to now. And the issue is, the perfect reason they are having is, is it is the cheapest way. So who would like to live the cheapest means to go to a, a very expensive way? So I don't need any permission from anyone to photocopy a book. Why would I need a, a permission? So it's more cost effective. That's one of the advantages of photocopying compared to buying out a textbook which can take like 70 to 50,000. Some of us, we are from villages. It, it is very hard. Someone comes with a book as thick as this. You get, eh? you don't know how much time he has taken to come up with that idea. Some people's wives have left them because they are just writing. They don't have time. Me, I will not accept it. While it is true that the copyright law provides authors with economic and moral rights as an essential incentive to engage their creative ability, this has augmented the price of textbooks, leaving students to opt for photocopying. We know that the students are not able to access all the textbooks that they are supposed to access. So they, they make those photocopies and they are able to, 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 to use them for scholarly purposes. We get our reading materials from the library and uh, some of them we get from the streets because the, the streets have some books. Yeah. I can access my reading materials from the net, that's uh, through Google, and also from the various publishers. But the rate at which photocopying is done at high institutions is so high an extent arguably inadmissible under the corporate law. This implies that once Uganda implements the anti-counterfeit bill, students will not easily access textbooks, let alone photocopy them. We want government to ensure that copyright laws do not affect access to education materials or knowledge goods negatively.
What we want government to do is to ensure that flexibility such as fair use are made maximum use of and incorporated into the law. The existence of numerous photocopy machines around high institutions of learning is a testimony of the scarcity of textbooks and costly study material. But that is the role of academia administrators in helping students access reading materials. We, we usually ask them to buy uh, books which are published by local authors. At the beginning of each semester, we conduct what we call user education session for all first year students, undergraduate and graduate students, so that we update our students on the literature we have and how they can access the literature. It is imperative that legislators make provisions that address this problem through clear-cut laws such as appropriate public policy, allowing free use of study material to avoid infringement on the copyright laws. At this stage of development, Uganda cannot afford to implement this law before it is amended. It is also essential that the proposed anti-counterfeit law, which prohibits the importation of trade in counterfeit materials, should be revisited. It does not recognize the flexibilities in the TRIPS agreement, which allows goods to be legitimately produced under certain situations without the consent of the intellectual property owner. There is a need to, for a mind, sh uh, a mind shift uh, so that people know that uh, when you photocopy a whole book, eh, it's criminal. It's something that can get you into prison. Um, but for them to also know that uh, they can buy the original copies from a bookshop. So just entrenching that culture that, you know, knowledge must be paid for. The Center for Health, Human Rights and Development is devoting exceptional attention to the intellectual property issues to highlight its implications on access to affordable reading materials. We may want also to see the copyright law addressing some of the opportunities like under the Creative Commons license. And as we speak now, a specific group that we are heading here at the Center for Health, Human Rights and Development is already developing a license where people can be able to produce educational materials and they are used at no cost. But in the meantime, the East African community is in the process of enacting the anti-counterfeit law and policy, which is contrary to the existing Ugandan law on counterfeit. Yet the idea of the integration of the East African community is intended for homogeneity of such laws. We have seen instances where the East African law is actually proposing a law like the anti-counterfeit law, which is not recognizing the policy space of the copyright legislation at the national level. So how do we reconcile with that? So again, some work needs to be done beyond the national legislation to actually underscore the importance of regional integration and the use of flexibilities. The Minister of East Africa Affairs needs to harmonize position on intellectual property laws with the national laws of member countries. All the books that are being produced under the government funding are produced under a license, under Creative Commons. It will be extremely helpful to ensure that uh, people that produce these materials are actually governed by the license itself, which recognizes that people must access materials. But the moment these materials that are supported by government funding are not under Creative Commons license, it's a disaster. The Minister of Education, too, may partner with experts and legislators to incorporate provisions of these laws that favor students to copy and produce study material before the transitional period deadline 2013. For most Ugandans, affordable reading materials remain a problem which will affect the education system in the region.